This is a special edition of News Vault 13. On Sunday, the New York State Hockey Team of Fame will celebrate its inaugural class. Part of that class, the team that gave us the miracle on ice. Jack O'Callaghan, who played defense on that team, will give the keynote speech Sunday. I caught up with Jack this week. I peppered him with questions about that game. But before we get to that, let's take a look back at our coverage the night the USA won against the Soviets. USA! 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 Excitement, jubilation, the same pandemonium that converged in the city of Pittsburgh about a month ago following the Steelers' win in the Super Bowl. In full swing at the Winter Olympics at Lake Placid last night, following America's upset win in hockey over the highly favored Russians, words simply can't describe the bedlam that engulfed this tiny Adirondack village. Hockey lovers, Olympic fanatics, even those just looking for a reason to celebrate out in full force. And simply unbelievable, what could head coach Herb Brooks possibly have told his club to get them so psyched? When I said you were born to be a player, you were meant to be here. This moment is yours. You were meant to be here at this time. I said, let's have the poise and possession with the puck. That's all I said. Right there. Even President Carter got into the act. Telephone Brooks immediately following the game, invited the entire team to the White House come Monday morning. The president did call, and he just said he made the American people very proud. We reflected uh, our ideals in the country for what we stand for. He invited us to the White House for a couple cases of Coke on Monday. You all know the story. Underdog American college kids pulling an incredible upset, one of the most dramatic in sports history over the four-time defending gold medalist, the Soviet Union. It all happened with the shadow of the Cold War in the background. I caught up with Jack O'Callaghan via Zoom this week. He said while this game had incredible cultural importance, for him and the team, they just focused on hockey. We're hockey players, you know, we don't, we didn't have this grand scheme of what was, was going to be or what it could be or this or that. We were like, you know what, one shift at a time, go play well, keep them off the score sheet, keep it close, try to get into the third period, down a goal or tied, and then maybe we got a shot. You know, that's kind of what we're thinking. But it was but so again, much more was, than keep, that. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Well, it became more than that, right? But was it, it more than that in the moment, though? I mean, no, in the moment, it was, it was not more than that. It was not more than that. I mean, it was more than that in the sense that we had USA in the front of our jerseys, right? And they had CCCP on the front of theirs. And it was 1980. It was the Cold War. It was, you know, Afghanistan, hostages in Iran. And it was all that, right? Gas prices and, you know, country upside down, right? So we got that. But on the other hand, we were just, we were hockey players, right? We we're all good players. We just wanted to play hockey and uh, doing the best we could. And we worked our butts off to get to this point. And, uh, and here we are. He says he's seen both the documentary and the movie about this team's iconic win. And seeing something on film about yourself, it's a little weird. When I'm sitting there, we watched the movie with the Hollywood Foreign Press and my daughter's here. And the guy that's played me on the movie is here, and he's a curly-haired, you know, handsome boy. And my 18-year-old daughter, after the movie's over, she turns and she says, Dad, you're the hottest guy in the movie. <laughs> and I go, I look at her, and I look at him, and I go, oh my god, this is going to be a problem. There's that iconic picture, right, at the end of the game when you realize you guys have won. Just what is going through your head in that moment, in that photo? Well, it was a lot of joy, you know, and a lot of sort of just sort of like, how do you grasp this? You know, we just beat the Russians. You know, like the best team in the world. They, they killed every NHL team they played against. Right, the all-star teams. They just, they won at will. They just beat these guys. So, yeah, I don't know. It was just sort of this sort of euphoria, right? You're just excited. We're all excited. I, I don't know how other guys felt. That was just, you know, just explosion of emotion. Jack said he never had plans for any of this to happen. Yeah, I graduated college. I had plans in my life to, you know, go to graduate school and kind of get in the investment world. And I'm doing that. I do it. I'm, I'm there. Uh, the the nine, or nine or 10 years I played professionally, that was a surprise for me. I wasn't planning on that. But life took another path. It just so happened that this happened and we win the gold medal in Lake Placid. And then all of a sudden it changed. I mean, we kind of broke through this glass ceiling where American hockey players who were once viewed as being soft and not not able to play in the National Hockey League, 
we opened up the doors for a lot of people in the generations to come. And he says he has such gratitude for the people of upstate New York. Great people in a great part of the state of New York with just terrific people. And they all volunteered to make sure the Olympics were terrific. The state police really looked after us. The New York State Police were terrific people. And we, we, all, we just felt very much comfortable and at home there. But the gold was not secured after beating the Russians. They had to go on and win against the Finns. They ultimately did, 4 to 2. And the next day, we heard from the champs themselves. We're number one! We're number one! We're number one! We're number one! They came from all over. All the way from Missouri. Toronto, New York, yeah. How about you? Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You came all the way up to see the hockey team? Definitely. Second game. Who's number one? Who would have believed it six months ago, or for that matter, even two weeks ago? The USA winning the hockey gold medal in the 80 Olympics. It all started with a surprising tie against the favored Swedes less than two weeks ago. Then the big upset win over the Czechs, a couple of coasters along the way, the historic win against the Russians, and the clinching come from behind victory over the Finns. Yeah, I'm just curious as to whether there was more pressure on you tonight than there was uh, Friday when you beat the Russians, or if you felt uh, some of the pressure was taken off, even though you fell behind uh, earlier this afternoon. I don't think uh, there was that much uh, pressure on us. That, you know, as far as you know, the Russian game was, uh, there was a lot of pressure. But if we lost the Russian game, there'd have been more pressure on to today's game. So, you know, I, I don't know if there was even added pressure today. You know, we knew what we had to do, and we went out and did it. We all talked, and we realized what was ahead of us, and that if we went out and played hockey, that uh, you know, that justice would take its right course. For those in the American corner, justice indeed did take its course. But for sure, the happiest man of all, head coach Herb Brooks. You people are, are watching a group of people that startled the athletic world. Not the hockey world, the athletic world. And as years go by, you remember these people. And for whatever you choose to write, and not to be our cheerleaders, but whatever you choose to write, these people are deserving, you know, of so much in view of their age, the things that they had to accomplish over a very short period of time. There they are, the Olympic champions for 1980. Off the ice, 20 individuals who've already started to celebrate. All America can take great pride in their unparalleled achievement. For 13 News in Lake Placid, I'm Scott Murray. And you probably noticed that man climbing up on the table at the end was none other than Jack O'Callaghan. Again, he and the team will be inducted into New York's new Hockey Hall of Fame on Sunday at 445. For a look at our other significant stories we've covered throughout the years, head to our WNYT YouTube page. Opening News Vault 13, I'm Rachel Teedy.